Live from the Civic Media World Headquarters in Madison, Wisconsin, it's the Todd Alba Show. And now, pursuing truth wherever it may lead, here's your host, Todd Alba. Good morning across the Civic Media Radio Network and streaming worldwide on the Civic Media app. I'm Todd Alba. It is Friday, May 12th, 2023. Glad to have you along with us on the end of the work week. TGIF, along with our producer, engineer, and co-host for the day today. The, I'm not going to say better half, but the one of the halves <laughs> of uh, Dueling Tangents oh, every I, afternoon. I can tell you I'm definitely not the better half. <laughs> Brian is 100% the, the better half. And that's why we send him off to do all of the important work across the Civic Media Network. Come on now. Come on. You're being too modest. And I am just the one that goes in front of the microphone while he does all the very important, very difficult, very hard work that it is assembling this growing statewide network yes. of radio stations. You both do a lot. Mr. Luke Mathers joins us. He is the co-host of Dueling Tangents every afternoon from 2 until 3 across the Civic Media Radio Network, except in WXCO Bull Falls Radio Wausau, where Chad Holmes does the great Chad Holmes show every afternoon from 2 until 4. Thank you, Mr. Luke. I appreciate you being along with us. Mr. Aaron Zomers is on a well-deserved vacation day today out in the woods trying to get himself a turkey. That's so. what that's what we hear. Reportedly trying to find a turkey in the woods. <laughs> yes, that's that's what we hear today. So uh, we'll be looking forward to having Mr. Zomers back on on Monday. But in the meantime, glad to have Luke Mathers join us this morning for a, a Friday. We uh, later on. Now we'll have we brought donuts in earlier today. Later on, it'll be on hour number three, Mimosa Friday. A little bit of uh, attitude of gratitude. What we're thankful for. We did board game of the week. Yesterday, Mr. Zomers. But what? He, uh, well, well, but, but his version, I, stand I, by, oh. it was his version. We'll, uh, we'll bring in Mr. Mathers for his edition okay. of, cool. the, of the cool, Luke cool, Mathers cool. version. I did my homework, too. All right. So, uh, was... so yeah, so we, 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 everybody's a winner. <laughs> it's just like Oprah. You, All the board you games. You get a board game. You, everybody gets a board game. <laughs> it's a good giveaway. I'm, I'm a big fan of board games, too. Right? So when I heard that I got to fill in on a Friday, I was like, yes, I get yes. to do board game of the week. Yeah. And I was a little upset to hear just a second ago, but I'm glad no. we're sharing. It's we're, not, we're, I didn't miss it. We just no. both are doing it. Yeah, we get a twofer, a one, one on Thursday and today Friday. So we, we appreciate that. 715-388-7155. If you'd like to join us this morning, again, 715-388-7155. We'd love to have your calls this morning. Talk a little Packers this morning and also talking a little news. Right now, we will go to the weather forecast for you. What is uh, making news and weather across the state of Wisconsin for this Friday, May 12th, 2023. Forecast for Richland Center, WRCE in Richland Center, the driftless this morning. Showers likely a high of 74, as showers and thunderstorms tonight, a low of 57, and tomorrow mostly cloudy. Slight chance of a shower at a high of 74 degrees. Up in Wausau, WXCO, Bull Falls Radio today, slight chance of a shower at 20%, a high of 76. Tonight, a slight chance of a shower at a low of 55. Tomorrow, partly cloudy. Sun's actually going to come out up there in Wausau for part of the day at a high of 71 degrees. And over at Amory, WLAK, Lake Air Radio, a chance of showers on and off today, a high of 72. For tonight, a 30% chance of a shower and a low of 58. And tomorrow, Saturday, a 30% chance of a shower and a high of 68 as well. Again, across the state of Wisconsin, it looks like particularly in the southern part, Richland Center, uh, a pretty wet weekend. Maybe on Sunday, you can dodge a couple of raindrops to get outside if you're celebrating Mother's Day with your with your mom. Otherwise, do something inside. Maybe a board game of the week, like Mr. Uh, Mr. Zomers yesterday. Mr. Mathers are going to share with us today uh, a good opportunity to to spend some time inside, perhaps with with family. Uh, we're going to we'll also check this hour the rest of the uh, of the Packers schedule. What's coming up in uh, this season? Also, get into a little bit after the break here. Uh, Tommy Tuberville, speaking of former football coaches who have gone absolutely bizarre, defending white nationalism in the U.S. military. Not making that up. But right now, let's go to the phones. Our uh, ongoing contributor, Mr. Jeff Perry. Mr. Perry, what do you know on a Friday? Uh, hey, Todd. Sorry, I'm in a I'm in a big hurry, and I'm yeah. hoping you can help me. I'm in my kitchen. <laughs> are you or are you not supposed to throw water on a grease fire? <laughs> Last I checked, no. No, you were not supposed okay. to. <laughs> Thanks a lot. I gotta go. Oh, see you later. Thank you. Appreciate that. That was Jeff Perry. I'm hoping everything's okay in Mr. Perry's household. <laughs> Apparently. Good Lord. 
Well, what is he? Man, what is he making with grease at this hour of the morning? Bacon? He, bacon. Maybe bacon. Maybe bacon. Eggs? All right, we'll see. All right, well, uh, thank you, Mr. Perry. Appreciate it. I wonder it. if that's a setup. Is there a punchline coming? I'm confused. <laughs> I I believe he's gotten into his liquor cabinet again <laughs> on, a, on an early Friday morning. The, the mimosa Friday is just yes. getting started a little early. He, he started a little bit early. Yes. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Appreciate him calling in. You can always join us as well on a Friday. 715-388-7155. Again, area code 715-388-7155. Glad to have, uh, have you along with us. Of course, uh, Mr. Mathers is along with us as well on a Friday. A couple of quick news headlines for you. Uh, the United States' COVID-era border restriction policy, known as Title 42, expired overnight. And with tens of thousands of migrants believed to be massed on the northern Mexico border today, and our following days, in the following days, will show just how effective the U.S. preparations were. Just before the expiration last night, the U.S. Homeland, Homeland Security issued a statement emphasizing it will not be any easier to gain unlawful entry now that Title 42 is lifted. And Elon Musk said yesterday he's found a new CEO of Twitter. He says he's going to step down and be the chief technology officer. Oh, lovely. <laughs> As if Twitter's working so well right now. We shall see. Talk uh, Packers, the rest of the Packers schedule, Mr. Mathers, and also one former football coach who's gone bonkers in the U.S. Senate. We've got it in his own words. Stay with us. This is the Todd Hallball Show on the Civic Media Radio Network. Show is now 9.15 on the Civic Media Radio Network right there. Right there in a nutshell. If you want to know what to do on Mother's Day weekend, Kenny Chesley has your answer. Call your mom, buy a beer, and chill out. That's all you got to do. There you go. That's right. Just, and according uh, to the forecast, you may be able to avoid some rain in most parts of the state, but not in not, Richmond Center. Not Richmond Center Richmond is going Center. to be a little soggier. Well, as my mom likes to say, in every life, a little rain must fall. It can't be sunny every day. That is that is just very wise. <laughs> She's a wise yes. woman. Rain is necessary. <laughs> yes, you gotta you gotta have a little rain once in a while. Uh, the Packers may have a little rain in their their schedule. We're gonna finish this up because uh, we got off on a tangent, which is absolutely wonderful. About uh, who is older and more decrepit, Al Michaels or uh, <laughs> your words or, on that? I was just saying Diane who's older. Feinstein. Okay, okay. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great though? Wouldn't that be great if Diane Feinstein called one of the Thursday night games and Al Michaels went to the Senate for a day? That would be a very, very, very strange edition of Trading Places, but yes. yes. Yes, it would. All right, so we're checking out the uh, the Packers schedule here. It uh, came out yesterday, the entire schedule. Uh, Thanksgiving Day. Let's see where we leave off. Uh, so the Vikings, they're, they're, uh, they're at home against the Vikings on October 29th. Ooh. Uh, Halloween weekend. Could be a scary game. Uh, then we got the week nine. They host the L.A. Rams. But that, that week eight? It's yeah. the first time the Vikings' first playoff team from 2022 that the Packers face. There you go. Like that. I, that's important to note. Like it there is. is a chance to stack some wins early, and yes, one of those <coughs> weeks is their bye week. Mm -hmm. But uh, it'll be interesting to see. I think Devontae Adams will have a very, very, very good game against the Packers, just because mm -hmm. you know those kind of revenge games right. are are how they go. But I think the Packers could still, you know, eat out a win potentially. Uh, in in Vegas. Were you old enough to remember? I'm serious, saying this seriously because I've realized how old I am. <laughs> were you old? Were you were you alive? Do you remember when uh, when Favre came back to to Lambeau and and beat Aaron Rodgers on it was either Sunday or Monday Night Football? 
I let was alive. <laughs> yes, that that was part of the question. So I'll address that <laughs> one right, first. Right, yes, right. I was alive, you do uh, and I do remember it. Oh, do you? I okay. do. Yes. Uh, it was. Uh, that was pretty much right. The start of a lot of sports fandom for me. Okay, was was right around then between uh, 2009 and then yeah, like 2012. That. Right around there, I, I really started. Fo- like obviously. You'd like sit and watch the Packer games on right. Sunday, family chili, all that stuff after church. Oh, sounds so good. Uh, but but I never really like got into into the games until about that time. So right. uh, that's when I became an avid fan. And yeah, the Brett Favre, he, he, he did I, pretty well. I, back back in the, I, mean, I actually cheered for Favre against Rogers. I just thought it was a great kind of stick to the Packers story. I was a big Favre supporter then. By the way, did you see that uh, Favre uh, dismissed or, or or got rid of his case against Pat McAfee on the defamation? lawsuit because Pat McAfee has been going after Favre on this whole thing where, where Favre has taken uh, uh, money that was set aside for welfare folks in, in Mississippi mm-hmm. to buy or rather to to build a practice facility for his daughter who is on the Mississippi State uh, volleyball team down there it's a, it's a ridiculous story and it just shows how far out of at least my good graces where Favre has fallen I wouldn't cheer for him now if it was I don't know what but uh, yeah it's Favre, just, Favre was also like Trying to give Tucker Carlson a break too. He oh yeah, like, come on everybody. Right. Like, yeah, so now, he, he's gone full mega. Yeah, it's just it, it's it's ridiculous. Anyway, uh, continue on the uh, the schedule then. As uh, as Luke pointed out, then they they play the uh, the Minnesota Vikings in week eight at home at home in week nine against the Rams uh, at the Steelers against the Watt brothers. Out in uh, out in Pittsburgh on Sunday the twelfth. Uh, then they go they're, they're they're at home against the Los Angeles Chargers. Play both the LA teams uh, within three weeks on the nineteenth, and then Thanksgiving Day. Holy balls! I don't think that. I mean, I don't think the Packers. <laughs> the the Packers are not going to be eating any traducan over at Detroit. I I just think that is. I think Detroit pounds them. See, I I disagree. Really? I disagree. Really? I think I think the Lions are gonna. I think the Lions are gonna win in Lambeau uh-huh. in Week Four, and I think. I think the Packers are going to be fired up, and they're going to be a young team. I want to say, what week is that? We're looking at week like uh, 11 it is, or 12. Uh, week 12. Week 12. Yep. I think the Packers are going to be kind of sitting there right at 500. They're going to be hungry. They're going to want wow. some turkey. And I think that they are going to go into Detroit on Thanksgiving, and uh, they are going to upset the Lions. All right. Speaking of great broadcasters, Al Michaels and John Madden back in the day. I'm not sure there was a better broadcast team. They were just fantastic. Yeah. You know, and John John Madden, you know, they got the traducan there, and they, I mean, it's just, it was just fantastic. Anyway. But those I don't remember. I, I've seen oh. video clips of a lot. But. Oh. <laughs> it's just, just, I mean, he and Pat Summerall on CBS, then Fox, and then, and then when he went to uh, NBC with Al Michaels, just some great broadcasting right there. Uh, week 13, they, uh, they go to the Kansas City Chiefs against the defending Super Bowl champions. No, we got the Chiefs coming to town. The Chiefs are coming to us. Oh, yeah. Yes, I'm sorry. I apologize. It's okay, like, but I have a feeling they lose that game. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think so as well. Then they go to the uh, the New York football giants on a Monday night game on ESPN on December 11th. Uh, they come home against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and then also home against the Carolina Panthers on Christmas Eve. At noon, and see, I would, I wish they'd cut this crap out. I n- nobody wants to watch an NFL game or an NBA game on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day. I don't. Do you? Yes. Why? Yes. It is. Why? It why? Is, it's the same as it's the same vibe as Thanksgiving. What's wrong? Why? Why can't you have football on Thanksgiving but not on the other holidays throughout the fall and winter? Because months? We, we've had football on Thanksgiving since God was a boy. And well, I mean, that's, that's just, just the way it is. True. That's just that, the way it is. Oh, I hate. Oh God, and, and so, God that, I hate that. And, and there's I hate no that reason phrase you upset so the Christmas holiday. I hate that phrase so much. <laughs> really? Oh, it is the way that it is. It's always been this way. We, we do it this way because we it's always tradition. do it this way. I, I'm fine with tradition, but the the aspect of oh, this is just the way we've always done it. I, I think it's fine if you want to. Every a lot of people are looking for things to do uh, on those Christmas and New Year's holidays still. And I, I, I think right. by all, all means, I'm going to be watching the Packers on 
on Christmas on Eve. Christmas Eve, and I'm going to be watching. I, I believe the Mo- uh, the Bucks will be scheduled as well. The Milwaukee Bucks uh, will be scheduled on Christmas Day again because they they're one of the top teams in the NBA, and they they usually get a Christmas Day marquee game. I and just think I'll about watch. like I think about the camera operators, all those people that have to be away from their families for for the holidays. That's what I think about. They do a lot of. The, I, um, I hope they get holiday pay, but I don't know. I guess what the what the, the terms are of their contracts, but at the same time, they always do the. I love the heart. They do the same thing that they do on Thanksgiving. They do all the the stories about the family members, and then the, the, they do video hellos. And right. I, I think it's I think it's good. Okay, fine. I'll I'll, I'll give you that. I <laughs> I think Christmas Eve should be Christmas cookies and eggnog and family and touchdowns. <laughs> and touchdowns. Well, apparently now it will be. Uh, week seventeen, uh, the Packers go to the Minnesota Vikings, uh, and that is New Year's Eve. Now, see that I don't have a big enough. I, that's fine. New Year's at seven twenty though. Who is going to want to watch the Packers at 7.20 on New Year's Eve? Well, by the time the game's done, you you then are getting ready for your New Year's Eve party. So then you go out 10 o'clock-ish. And, and, by, and by the way, this completely messes up uh, the telethon at WRCL Richland Center because telethon goes is supposed to go on that night and uh, uh, for charity. And now we got to carry the Packers. <laughs> I don't know about those uh, scheduling things. Yeah, I don't but, you know, know. We'll, 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 provide, we'll, you, we'll check it with Philney. You, you provide uh, live updates on the on the telethon for the game. <laughs> you just get somebody uh, at the telethon doing a little play by play. It's it's trivia thon, not telethon. But it's, it's, a, it's a trivia thon. But well, it's, trivia it's about who just got the play for twelve yards. <laughs> All right, we may have trivia <laughs> trivia thon maybe on WRCE this year instead of WRCO. We'll see. I'm checking with Philney. We'll make it happen. We'll make it happen. Luke Mathers can make it happen. He is the he he's like. Uh, I'm trying to think of like an analogy. He is like the dude sitting at the controls that could just turn off everything. No, like, again, that's you, Brian. You, you, you don't. You, you, well, you we're, have, but we're, we're you one have of the, the same. Keys. Almost, you sometimes. have the keys. Like yeah. you don't want to. You want to stay on Luke's good side if you want your show on the air. <laughs> Just say that. And they finish up the uh, the season. Week 18, the Packers do like they started it this time at Chicago. Oh, me, no, 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 at home, at home, yes, at home, yes. at, at Lambeau Field they get to against at the Bears. Yeah. Date and time TBD, depending upon if the season's over by that time, they'll be flexed into ESPN+. Plus. Well, it, we, it, it happened that uh, last year because the, the Packers controlled their own destiny. They, they could have played yeah. into the playoffs, and instead they, they hosted Detroit, and Aaron Rodgers' final pass as a Green Bay Packer was an interception. Uh, shockingly, I believe, uh, if not uh, to the same exact... Uh, uh, sequence. I, I, I want to say they both went like two for eight in their last eight throws as Green Bay Packers, but Brett Favre, I believe, also threw a interception on one of his last plays in, in the, the playoffs Green Bowl. against the New York Football Giants. Yep. And so it is. Uh, it's troubling that they can control their own <laughs> destiny and they lost like that last year. But it, it could be the similar uh, circumstance, but this time instead of against the. The Lions, like last year, it could be against the Chicago Bears. So it'll be yeah. interesting to see. It will. So there's your uh, there's your schedule. How many uh, wins? How many wins do you think they're going to get out of this, uh, all this right, schedule? Let's see. Uh, I know not to put you on a hard number, but no, no, just no, 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 just, I'm just, I'm just yeah, I'm just I'm just looking here. I I think they could. I I I think there's a chance to get eight wins on the season. You think eight wins? Yeah. Okay. I, I, I I, I'm gonna I'm gonna go out and limit and be positive on on Jordan Love. No, no reason to hate on Jordan Love. I think that's generous. Uh, I was seeing some uh, lines taking like the over under around six, and I, okay. I think I can take the over on that because I, I think yeah. they're gonna get six or, or five and a half or whatever it was. <laughs> five and a half was the line, um, so I was taking six. Uh, but it'll be interesting to see. I'm excited for this young team. Uh, I'm gonna be watching the 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 mini camps and the workouts and then checking in on all these new offensive weapons, and I think it's a lot of fun. We've got a new Packers beat reporter here. Yes, part of talk about Media. that for a second. That's Mike exciting. Clemens is joining the team, so we're excited. We're going to be uh, growing uh, some of the new stations that Civic Media is going to be rolling out this summer is also <laughs> going to uh, be able to cover the Packers beat, and so we're excited for that. And Mike Clemens is joining the team here at Civic Media, so we will have uh, more Packers content throughout this off season and going into the 2023 season as well. I'm not sure if we're allowed to talk about it yet, but there will be uh, uh, 
uh, expanded Packer coverage on the Civic Media yes. Network. Uh, I, I, I don't think I can share specifics yet, right. but it's coming. It's I can tease that it. it's coming. Yeah. Uh, the, that's expanded happening. Expanded Packer coverage across the state of Wisconsin and Civic Media. We appreciate all of our sponsors for Packer football as well. They're the ones that help bring us uh, every year. And speaking of great broadcast teams, it'll be Wayne Larravee. Once again, throwing in his dagger onto the mic each and every week, along with uh, The Rock will be on there as well. How long is he going to be going on? Uh, that's I, I don't know. <laughs> Off the top of my head, I, I don't think I can... S- I, I, I wouldn't even know we'll what see. to guess. Like yeah. it's, it's years, right? Years and years. So. But Wayne Larravee, uh, of course, used to be the, the uh, play-by-play guy for for Chicago for many years before he coming to mm-hmm. the, before coming to the yeah. Packers. But Wayne Larravee, Lar- Wayne Larravee does a great job, and uh, the Packers radio network can be heard right here all season long this fall, this winter on the Civic Media Radio Network across select stations. Hopefully one of your stations has been selected. <laughs> I can tell you one <laughs> one of them one of them is WRCO FM 100.9 in Richland Center, Wisconsin. A great flagship station here at Civic Media for uh, for Packers and we'll have more announcements soon on other stations. Yeah, so it'll it'll Again, just you want to stay up to date with what we're doing on our website, That's civicmedia.us. Right. There's just keep up to date with everything we're doing because we've right. got a busy summer. There he is, Luke Mathers, our operations director, guru to the stars, and today our fine host and broadcast engineer. Back with more after this on the Civic Media Radio Network. was stuck in my head. That's good. Uh, because we played it on Up North News Radio this oh, morning. Oh, nice. All right, very good. Uh, because it was, what, this day in musical history, I believe, oh. is the birthday of the lead singer here. Ah. And yeah. Pat was like, I don't even know this band. And then Pat got some <laughs> Facebook comments saying, oh, no, it's a great song. And so then I played it because Mom and Pa, because it's Mother's mm-hmm. Day. And then now I thought the transition was perfect again because we're going to talk about an Alabama senator in a little uh, bit. Yeah. Uh, as it turns out, uh, Luke Mather is co-host of Dueling Tangents every afternoon from 2 and until three of the Civic Media Radio Network, except in Wausau, WXCO, Bull Falls Radio, where Chad Holmes has the Chad Holmes Show from 2 until 4. Luke has uh, dueling tangents with Brian Kelly. He is kind enough to come in and uh, fill in for a vacationing Aaron Zomers this morning. We appreciate that, Mr. Mathers. Uh, he is absolutely right. So, Thomas Hawley Tuberville, better known as Tommy Tuberville. I like the fact that our colleague uh, <laughs> uh, Matt Flynn calls him Tuberville. I thought he was called Tuberville, to be fair, and I don't know if it's because Matt or why, but I've always thought it was Tuberville. I just enjoy it, so I don't correct him. Uh, I think it's on purpose. So it's Tommy (laughs) Tuberville, and uh, he is, of course, a legend down in Alabama, uh, was the Auburn University coach from 1999 to 2008. It was a pretty respected coach. And then got himself elected to the United States Senate on the Republican side. And ever since then, he has been nothing but all mega all the time. He is all in on Trump. All in on the mega agenda. And it's pretty much been an abomination, in my opinion, in the United States Senate. So this week on MSNBC and the program Chris Hayes, Chris Hayes starts talking about Tuberville and his most recent comments which are appalling. And uh, so I'm going to play a little bit of this uh, uh, from uh, Chris Hayes on MSNBC. We're going to come back and give you Tuberville's response. The mass shooter now in Texas. The far right has refused to admit that extremist views fuel violence and mass killings. White nationalism, in their telling, is just another point of view, an ideology that's just as legitimate as any other. And that view is echoed, apparently... By Senator Tommy Tuberville, an Alabama Republican who sits on the Armed Services Committee in a recent radio interview as he complains about Pentagon efforts to keep extremists out of the military. We are losing in the military so fast our readiness in terms of recruitment. And why? I can tell you why. Because the Democrats are attacking our military saying we need to get out the white extremists, the white nationalists, people that don't 
don't believe in, in our agenda as, as uh, Joe Biden agenda, uh, they're destroying it. You mentioned the Biden administration trying to prevent um, white nationalists from being in the military. Do you believe they should allow white nationalists in the military? Well, they call them that. I call them Americans. I call them Americans. Today, Tower Rail's office attempted to do a little cleanup, trying to clarify the center was just, quote, being skeptical of the notion that there are white nationalists in the military, not that he believes they should be in the military, even though, as you just heard, the center didn't really say that. All right, so that's from uh, Chris Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Mr. Mathers, uh, I don't know anything that, well, there are certainly things that are more offensive, but to simply say, quote, white nationalists, I call them Americans, it's an affront to Americans. It's an affront to every man and woman who's put on the uniform and served this country and put their life on the line and every person who still does. Yeah, it's uh, it's disturbing to see the whitewashing. Mm-hmm. That's that's what it is. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's not, a, I'm not trying to do a pun or a play on words mm-hmm. or anything like that, but it, it's downplaying the severity of what that ideology is stands for and and individuals like the fbi and and our armed forces and and all of these national law enforcement aspects have been telling us for years now that the growing extremism in white nationalism and on the far right is is a top threat and we need to address it accordingly and and to downplay that and say well I, i don't call them white nationalists i call them americans it's disturbing and what uh, it certainly is disturbing. And what Tuberville is really, let's just put it on the line here. Let's say what he's what he's tried to dance around a little bit is that mega folks, again, not all Republicans, but mega folks in particular, and Republican leaders in this country, are are very agitated by the fact that the military is one of the most integrated places in the country. I, I had the pleasure one time of meeting Colin Powell, former uh, sec- or Joint Chiefs of Staff. Great guy, wrote a great book one time, or has a great autobiography. I would highly encourage you to read it, My American Life, where he talks about growing up, I believe it was uh, uh, Brooklyn, Harlem, I apologize, I don't remember exactly, but, uh, but a suburb of New York, mm-hmm. very integrated area, as a black kid. And, and you know, his, he has uh, roots in the Caribbean. His family immigrated from there. And the fact that a kid of color could work their way up and eventually be the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. And he makes the point in his book that when he was growing up, in his time, there were very few places in the United States of America where you could have achieved basically CEO level of a major corporation. And he makes the point that the United States military, and he doesn't, he points out there was still discrimination, still racism in the military. He doesn't try to avoid that. But the point is that on the whole, the United States military is set up so that if you do your job, if you if you exceed your expectations, you will get rewarded. And again, not to say there hasn't been discrimination and isn't still discrimination in the military, like every place there is. But the military is one of the most integrated places that there are in the United States of America. And also, remember, look, I'm old enough to remember that in the Clinton era, don't ask, don't tell. That was kind of the, you know, it used to be that if you were gay... And you were outed or you came out, you were gone. You could not serve the United States military. And then we kind of had this detente between Republicans and Democrats. Clinton was involved in this. Don't ask, don't tell. In other words, if you're gay, you can serve the military. Just don't tell us and we won't ask you. But still, if you were outed or if you told anybody, you were gone. And now we're at the point in the United States, thankfully, where people are serving openly as gay. And then there was an attack a few years ago on trans people. And people were somehow astounded. Oh, my gosh, we had no idea there were so many people that were trans in the United States military. And, oh, my gosh, they do a fantastic job. They don't talk about their sexuality. They don't talk about their personal life. They just come in and do their job. And so little by little, we've been making progress in the United States military. But this has ticked off the mega extreme right in this country. They have put this social agenda like they do on everything and, and, and make things up and, again, try to divide us. Not just dividing the military, but trying to divide us as neighbors across America and across Wisconsin. And it's so sad 
And it's so unfortunate. And yes, like any, any organization of the size of the United States military, guess what? 90 whatever, 7, 98% of the folks are fantastic. There's always going to be a couple of bad apples in the bunch. And you've got uh, people that are serving in the United States military, like there are in corporations and every place else, that are white nationalists, that are bad apples and need to be gotten out of there. And Tommy Tuberville, a United States senator, is saying no. No, I want to leave them in there because they're just Americans. White nationalists. People who want to kill black and Hispanic people. People want to kill Jewish people in this country. A very small percentage that need to be gotten out of the military. And Tommy Tuberville is defending them. I believe it was last night or the night before. Uh, let's see, we have time for this, Luke? Uh, 42, yes. all right. Uh, this was on uh, uh, one of the few people I still respect. <laughs> I shouldn't say that, but uh, on, on uh, CNN, Jake Tapper is the lead on CNN. Uh, former Republican Congressman Adam Kinzinger from Illinois. He, of course, was one of the two Republicans in the bipartisan January 6th committee. Former Congressman Adam Kinzinger, himself a current military person, had this to say in response to Tommy Somerville on Jake Tapper's the lead. Let's talk about this with former Republican Congressman Adam Kinzinger, who served in the U.S. Air Force, currently serves as a lieutenant colonel in the Air National Guard. A lot to talk about here. Uh, let's start with his comments on white nationalists in, in the military and this idea that the Biden administration wants to purge. I mean, I mean I, I, I'm not sure whether he is actually defending the idea of white nationalists serving in the military or he is lying about the fact that there's some effort to get Republicans out of the military. Oh, well, I think he's lying about both. You know, first off, there are some things I disagree with that are happening in the military. And as a pilot, you know, I spend quite a bit of my time doing computer-based training uh, on things that have nothing to do with my job. You can criticize that. And of you can make that an issue. Yeah. But the idea, the idea that there aren't white nationalists is wrong. There's some. It's not a lot, but there's some. And then, you know, the idea that they're Americans is, is, is crazy. You would just say, oh, they're Americans, they're fine. And the idea that there's this push to push out Republicans is not true either. You know, look, the, the U.S. military is one of the last institutions to enjoy bipartisan support. I mean, even the FBI now is a partisan thing. Every person that tries to make the military a partisan issue, Ted Cruz, you know, tweeting about how great the Russians are, despite the fact that they're getting crushed on the battlefield now, um, you know, that kind of stuff, it's politicizing the military, and that can't happen. And white nationalists, by the way, Jake, should be excluded from serving in the U.S. military. I got asked when I joined the military if I was a communist or if I was a member of a group that sought the overthrow of the U.S. government. And if I'd have said yes, I wouldn't have been able to serve. We can expand that to include white nationalism. And I mean, for me, this comment about like, well, I call them Americans, like that coming after what he said about Democrats like crime and that's why they wanna give reparations to the people who do the crime. I can't recall a more blatantly racist statement by a member of the US Senate in literally in decades. Yeah, and the problem is, Jake, we're kind of like numb to the outrage now. There's so much outrage that is just constantly being thrown at us that it gets buried or we're like, oh, that's that's not a huge deal. That's a huge deal. Um, I mean, it's, it's outright blatant racism, uh, what he said. I'm glad, I guess, he's trying to, to change what he meant by that. I, I don't think it's inaccurate the changes, but at least he's, you know, recognizing that that's bad for him. But here's what happens. You know, everybody has a battle in their heart every day between light and dark, you know, and when leaders stand up in front of you and they speak the dark parts of your hearts, the fears, you know, all that kind of stuff, it gives permission for that darkness to overtake you. And leaders in America, for the most part, you know, for all of our history, have realized they have to they have to shed light. This is a time where they're standing in front of crowds and spewing darkness. And it's a frightening time, frankly. That is, uh, is. We heard United States Congressman Adam Kinzinger, Republican, not a former Republican, a Republican who was pushed out of Congress after he had the audacity to stand up to Donald Trump and vote for his second impeachment. That is someone who's not just a current Republican, Adam Kinzinger, a former congressman, Republican congressman from Illinois. 
He is a current member of, I believe, the Air National Guard. A current member of the military. Saying those things. So spare me when we have people like Derek Van Orton over in the 3rd Congressional District, who starts every sentence with, as a former Navy SEAL. Spare me the, if you don't support every single thing that every single person says about the military, somehow you're terrible. We need people like Adam Kingslinger who are willing to stand up and call people like Tommy Tuberville and the blatant racism in this country out. Because if you don't, it does a disservice to the 98% of the outstanding men and women who have served our country in the past, who have given the ultimate sacrifice, and who continue to put the uniform on and stand guard over security and freedom today. And we need to call people like Tommy Tuberville out. Disgusting comments. And that the mega Republicans put up with this crap is beyond abhorrent. So good on Adam Kinzinger. There is at least a couple of Republicans, like Adam Kinzinger and Liz Cheney. You might not agree with everything they say, but by God, at least they can stand up against racism. I give them that. Back with more after this. This is the Tom Ball Show, and this is the Civic Media Radio Network. Radio Network, and it's now 9.50. That's 10 minutes before the hour, 10 o'clock. Coming up at the top of the hour, a uh, national news break, a little weather for you. And then hour number three, coming up in hour number three, not going to want to miss it. We had Mr. Zomer's board game of the week yesterday. We have a bonus board game of the week with our very own Mr. Luke Mathers, who is in for Mr. Zomer's today. We are looking forward in nervous anticipation to that. Also, it's Mimosa Friday. We'll end the show with an attitude of gratitude, telling you what we are thankful for today. And, uh... Little, uh, we'll take your phone calls on mom stories. Mother's Day coming up. I know for folks that have lost their moms or maybe relationships are strained, it can be a tough day. So I want to acknowledge uh, that for, for some folks. Not necessarily a fun day. For those who are still blessed and fortunate enough to have our mothers or grandmothers with us, uh, take a little time for mom and, uh, and, and, and do your part to, to salute her. So we'll take your phone calls. Do you have a great mom story? Give us a call here next hour. So uh, your opportunity to do a little salute to mom. I uh, want to finish up this hour with a couple of things here. Just a couple of, uh, geez, it makes you wonder. Here's Senator uh, Johnson saying uh, uh, it's no coincidence that Tennessee is one of the most fiscally stable states in America and one of the most fiscally conservative. Conservative policies and Tennessee is a prime example of that. It turns out, though, according to the Tennessee Holler, that Tennessee is among the most federally dependent states in the United States. A new study suggests Tennessee, this is from a couple of years ago, uh, Tennessee is not paying its way in America as the state's residents and government are taking more than the federal government is putting in. The report is from Wallet Hub, a financial advice website that also reveals studies on economic and social issues affecting the United States and cities. The new report, released today, figures Tennessee state government is the third most dependent state on federal funding. A figure derived from the proportion of state revenue that comes from the federal government in the form of intergovernmental aid. Mr. Mathers... Trigley Olson and I talk on Wednesdays about the ongoing Republican narrative as both of us spent many years in the Republican Party and no longer there. But this is, a, a, you know, again, I've talked about this before. Personal responsibility is something we heard for years and years and years in the Republican Party. We've got to be personally responsible. And it seems to be all well and good until some of these states that want to boast about conservatism and want to get down on, on poor folks... And, and people of, of color 
but they also want all their state, national, federal funding to take care of their own state. The irony. Yeah, I mean, they don't shy away from irony in some of the stances that they take. Uh, I think U.S. Senator Ron Johnson is is a shining example of that because, you know, I mean, he, take it this way. Personal responsibility to address the COVID-19 p- pandemic. Mm. Wear a mask. Do social distancing. Right. Get, get the vaccine. All, all things that you can do take personal responsibility to stop the spread of COVID-19. They politicized it and they said... That no, that's that's big government infringing on my rights. All of a sudden, then, so it, there, there's a fine line between when they use the argument of personal responsibility and when they use the argument of government overreach or or whatever else you want to substitute in for it. It's uh, it's breathtaking sometimes when they when they try to do this and and point to you know, government's bad, but but no 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 on this end uh, government's good. Another little uh, quick uh, story here. Uh, seventh tier Republican candidate for president, I believe it is it Vivek. Is that how you say his first time? I think? believe it's Vivek. I'm not certain. Vivek Ramaswamy, the Swami says. Remember that? That was a great segment on ESPN on Sunday mornings. Chris uh, uh, Chris Berman, the Swami says uh, predictions for NFL. Anyway, uh, Vivek Ramaswamy had a uh, uh, a little fundraiser. <laughs> Emphasis on little this week. Here is a person. The Republican Party is putting up. Might be a low candidate, but still a Republican candidate for president. If you can't beat the Gen Zers, if you can't have policies that relate to people in their early 20s, here's what Vivek Ramaswamy thinks Republicans should do. Bear with him. In 1971, when we lowered the voting age to 18 in this country, we did it in the context of a draft. We had a military draft that said, if you were 18 years old and you were old enough to serve the country, then by God, you should be old enough to vote. And I stand by that law. It was the right thing to do. I do not stand by a draft today. We have no reason for one, but it was civic duty back then that tied the privileges of citizenship, the ultimate privilege, the right to vote, to say that if you want to play in the game, you got to have skin in the game. When I think about young Americans today, I see a deficit of national pride because I see a deficit of duty. You don't value that country you inherit. You will only value, you have a stake, a country of a stake in building and knowing something about it. And so that is why today I'm announcing my support for a new amendment to the U.S. Constitution. That amendment would raise the voting age in this country from 18 to 25, but still tell you that you can vote at 18 if you either do service to this country six months in the military or six months as a first responder. All right, that's enough. Or <laughs> so here's Rasan Swamy, uh, the, uh, again, a Republican candidate for president, very low tier. This is their idea to lower the, or to raise the voting age to 25 unless you're in the military or you do a six month stint as an EMS worker well then we get to then then fine we'll allow you to vote at 18 I mean Mr. Mathers you are a, a, on the high end of the Gen Zers here but I mean this, this is low end of the millennials come on <laughs> stop it <laughs> you're a young dude I love it I love youth and energy in this place and, and, and we saw this in, in the vote for Janet Prone sandwich in this state back in uh, April all the college, the Gen Zers came out and made a huge difference in that race. And now they want to raise, Republicans, some want to raise the voting age to 25. Have you ever heard anything so ridiculous? Uh, well, speaking of the former guy, uh, U.S. Senator Ron Johnson, uh, he didn't know what the voting age was. Uh, <laughs> or, excuse me, not the voting age, the drinking age. Yeah, the drinking That's age, what it yeah. was. Because uh, he was asked about assault weapons, and it was, well, if you're 18, you should be able to uh, buy a gun, you should be able to vote, and you should mm-hmm. be able to go buy a beer. And, and then uh, the, the devil's advocates where that interview was taking place, uh, they asked, well, are you, are you for ra- lowering the drinking age, sir? And he goes, no, can't, can't eight year old, 18-year-olds drink now? <laughs> and they're like, no, sir. And so Senator Johnson, a <laughs> little out of touch, didn't know what the, what the drinking age was. <laughs> Crudy and Dom had to educate Senator Johnson. Just on, a little bit. So there, little there bit. are some, you know, some strange comments that I, come out, and I, I think this can be chalked up as one of them. I mean, 25 to vote? 
Come on now, as Barack Obama likes to say, that's just not even real. That's that's the joke that a lot of the Republican Party and the mega Republicans have become. No joke, we're back with our number three, including Mr. Mather's Board Game of the Week and also Mimosa Friday. Not going to want to miss it. It's the Todd Ball Show on the Civic Media or Radio Network.